This is Friday, October the 5th, 1990. My name is Thomas A. Scott, and today's interview is with Roy Eugene Barnes. The interview is being conducted in um, Mr. Barnes's uh, law offices in Marietta. Well, Mr. Barnes, I wonder if you would begin by talking a little bit about um, yourself and your childhood and uh, what, uh, when you were born and were you, have you always lived in Mableton and a few things of that sort? Well, I was born in 1948 and yes, I've always lived in Mableton. Uh, my family uh, has been there since uh, right after the turn of the century and uh, been in the general merchandise business and I grew up in Mableton, went to Mableton Elementary School and uh, South Cobb High School. Mm -hmm. Um, you, uh, you say your family has been there since uh, the turn of the century. Where did your family come from before it moved to Cobb they, they were from up in North Georgia, from Gilmer and Pickens County. Uh -huh. uh, Ella J and Jasper and Talking Rock and all those places up mm -hmm. through there. Uh -huh. We still got a good bit of family up there. Uh -huh. But my grandfather moved to Cobb County in 1919. Uh, and uh, of course we've been here ever since. Uh -huh. What brought them down to Cobb County? Evidently, after World War I, uh, it became very hard up at, economically up in the mountains, uh -huh. North Georgia. And my grandfather was a merchant up there. I mean, mm -hmm. our family's always been traders or peddlers mm -hmm. and merchants. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and uh, he ran a store up there at mm -hmm. Blaine, mm -hmm. Georgia, a little town in Blaine, that was uh -huh. named after James G. Blaine, who was the Republican oh, yeah. candidate in 1870. 1876, 1880, somewhere in there. Some, yeah, that's right. What but anyway, the, uh, they uh, uh -huh. they came here really because of uh, economics. Uh -huh. Was that Republican country up there? It's uh, Gilmer County is generally considered to be a Republican county. Pickens is e pretty evenly divided, even today. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't get elected in a local county office in Pickens County if you're a Republican or a Democrat. So all the county officials run as independents. Mm -hmm. And uh, but Gilmer's pretty Republican. Next county up is Lumpkin, uh -huh. uh, and it's pretty Republican too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 1919, uh, let's see, was a good year for agriculture, and then the next year was when the bottom fell out of the market, um, which had been right after they moved and got started. It was. Grandpa moved down here in 1919, and then he, uh, of course, he, he bought a farm when he came down here. Then he set up a store up down there in Mableton and up in Floyd Station, as it's called. Uh -huh. Of course, the railroad, mm -hmm. they've taken up the railroad the last few years. but. Mm -hmm. Then in 1929, he moved that store down to Mableton, mm -hmm. and um, he um, that store's been in operation in the same place ever since. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was a remarkable fellow. His name was Henry, mm -hmm. uh, and he was a school. He taught school. Mm -hmm. He uh, farmed and ran a store all at the same time. Is that right? I've got some of his old teacher's contracts mm -hmm. where he taught school for. Fifteen and twenty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I just about had to farm and run a yeah, store. Yeah, they did. It was they, they were hard times. Yeah. I guess the probably the way they were working it is that um, the schools were running when things were slow on the farm. They were. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard uh, my grandmother and my father talk about it. That uh, grandpa would always got up early, and mm -hmm. I do too. I mean, I, I can't. Uh, I get up generally. Five o'clock, five five thirty in the morning. Grandpa would get up early, <clears throat> and he'd uh, start them all to the fields of the morning, and then go to uh, the store by seven thirty and open the store and start them. And then he'd go teach all day in school, hmm. and come back at night to the farm, and then uh, come on to the store and stay at the store at nine ten o'clock at night. And next morning he was up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a remarkable fellow. I, I remember him. I was about eight years old when he died in 1956. Mm -hmm. hmm. Did he work in the store right up to the time he died? He was 83 when he died. He never drove an automobile. He always kept him a new one, huh. but he never drove one. He'd have some, never learned how to drive. And he would walk to Mableton to the two stores then, mm -hmm. by then, uh, to see my uncle, which 
was my father's brother. Mm -hmm. Ran one store, my daddy ran the other. Mm -hmm. and he, he walked to the stores every day, mm -hmm. check on everybody. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now, the, the W.C. Barnes hardware, was that your father? And my father. <clears throat> what it was, uh, the uh, old store was Barnes Brothers, uh -huh. and uh, it was my grandfather and my two, and my uncle and my father, the mm -hmm. two boys. And then as the families grew, Daddy, Grandpa built Daddy a store, and they mm -hmm. sit side by side. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daddy ran one store, and Uncle Felton ran the other. Mm -hmm. And uh, but now my uncle is dead. My daddy is the the last of uh, the original ones that were born in Gilbert and Pickens County. Mm -hmm. Here, Daddy was three years old when they moved to Cobb County. He was, he was born in Tawthorne. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's how they two stores, and one's Barnes store and one's W.C. Mm -hmm. Barnes store. My and brother you, runs it now. Your uncle was named Felton? Felton Barnes. At the L-T-O-N? Yes. I was just wondering if that was a family name or there was a famous politician yeah, named Rebecca Felton. Rebecca Latimer. Yeah, well, and, and, her, and her husband, husband was an independent congressman yeah. from the 7th. I don't know who Uncle Felton was named after. Um, I, You know, Uncle Felton was well, Uncle Felton was a remarkable businessman. Uh, I greatly admired him. He uh, he, he understood uh, business, and uh, I guess what I know about business, what little I know, came from my Uncle Felton and my daddy. Uh, both of them good businessmen, and I've got an older brother that's a good good businessman. In my family, uh, the greatest compliment that can be paid to somebody is to say whether well, he's a good merchant. Mm -hmm. uh, which mm -hmm. means it's good business, man. Mm -hmm. uh, we've always been in business and and uh, mercantile business generally. Traders. My daddy was a, my daddy was the best trader I have ever been around. His mm -hmm. daddy's still alive, but in poor yeah. health. Mm -hmm. But he, of course, he ran the store. But he also traded horses, mules, and a lot of cattle. Mm -hmm. I used to go with him to the stockyards, and uh, which is you know just a vicious. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Really, a bunch uh, and Trent Daddy was one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, he, I, I learned a lot by watching. Yeah, huh. but you didn't want to go into the store yourself. Well, I did. I always liked the business. I, uh, my brother went off to uh, went to uh, Knight Law School over in Atlanta. My older brother, uh -huh. and uh, runs the business, and uh, he's nine years older than I am. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I, as he would come to the store and he'd bring his books to kind of study during slack time in the store and I began to read them and yeah. as I was a kid and so I went off to law school uh, really thinking about coming back and going into business but uh, after I started practicing law I stayed even though I, mm -hmm. I still am active in business but uh, I still I practice law. I read somewhere that your family were Talmadge supporters, they was were. that true? Fierce Talmadge supporters. My grandfather and Gene Talmadge were uh, good friends, and in fact, Gene used to come out to the store uh, to see my grandfather. And the old store, you came to vote at the store. That's where mm -hmm. you voted, uh -huh. and uh, all that. Yeah. And there was, after that, there was a little J.P. Courthouse. Mm -hmm. It was in the parking lot for years. Our first case I ever heard tried was the J.P. Court uh -huh. that when I slipped off as a kid to listen to it. Uh -huh. But uh, we were, they were fierce Talmadge folks. In fact, my middle name is Eugene, and they always yeah. said I was named after Gene Is Talmadge. that right? <coughs> but they were fierce Talmadge uh -huh. folks, and back then there were two parties in Georgia. It was the uh -huh. Talmadges and the anti Talmadges, uh -huh. and my folks were always Talmadges. My daddy said the only time that the grandpa ever hesitated on Talmadge was I believe it was 36, uh, mm -hmm. 36 or 38, when Gene Talmadge ran against Richard Russell. And that's 36. 36. Uh -huh. And uh, Daddy said that uh, Grandpa supported Gene, but he told him, he said, Gene, he says, you know, he says, you don't beat Gene Talmadge, I mean, uh, Ri uh, Richard Russell. Mm -hmm. And because Grandpa always liked Richard Russell, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he ran against Walter George in 38. 38 and got beat. Got beat in fact, Walter. Gene used to say, he said, we have got to, must have the best, two best United States senators in the, in the nation. Because he said, I've run against both of them, both of them beat me. <laughs> uh, and then I thought it was ironic that it was really Gene's son, Herman, who forced out 
Walter and George right. in 1954. That's right. So, mm -hmm. 54, 56, 56. 56. Now, I was under the impression that the Talmages were not that strong in Cobb County in North Georgia. They weren't. They always had a hard time in Cobb. Uh, of course, in 46, Jimmy Carmichael ran, was mm -hmm. from Cobb County. Mm -hmm. uh, but our folks were always for him, uh, for the Talmages. Uh, and I guess it's one of the reasons that uh, uh, the Talmages have always been a friend. In fact, when I see Herman now, he always speaks of my grandfather, mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and we talk about him. Mm -hmm. But uh, they did have a hard time in Cobb, but they were always for him. Mm -hmm. you have any idea why they supported Talmadge? I don't know. Uh, Grandpa was, uh, let me tell you something, uh, you know, Gene Tamwich was really just a younger version of Tom Watson. Mm -hmm. And Grandpa was a big supporter of Tom Watson. Uh -huh. was that uh -huh. populist boom uh -huh. that occurred yeah. about the turn of the mm -hmm. century. Right. And um, I think that it just logically followed from the Watson strain. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, as I said, mm -hmm. a lot of Gene Tamwich's strength came through that, uh, that, that Watson strain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They like the personality and the yeah. populist appeal yeah. of Talmadge. Mm -hmm. um, would you say something about uh, uh, the way Mableton has changed uh, over the years from the time that you were a child there? Mableton in the late 40s and early 50s, mid 50s, really late 50s was uh, a rural community. In the late 40s and up to about 53, I believe it was. We ran a dairy in, in Mableton. Daddy mm -hmm. had a big dairy there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mableton was a rural community. It was a delightful place. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the late, or really in the early 60s, uh, the, the great white flight from Atlanta mm -hmm. hit South Cobb. And there for a while, there were some census districts in South Cobb around Mableton that were the fastest growing in the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember my daddy saying, you know, the first time he ever, uh, we ever heard of a subdivision, in fact, one of the first times I ever remember C.W. Matthew. Mm -hmm. C.W. was cutting a road in a subdivision down there and driving the bulldozer himself. Mm -hmm. And uh, he'd come over and buy stuff at the store from us. <coughs> and, uh, they were the houses were half acre lots, uh, brick houses, mm -hmm. wood floor, hardwood floors, two bedrooms, bath, bath and a half. Sold for ninety five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and the lots themselves sold for ninety five hundred. I mean nine nine hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm. And my daddy said, I remember one time says, can you believe that any idiot would give $950 for <laughs> a half acre piece of ground? <laughs> and it's a good example of how things have changed, just changed mm. rapidly, mm -hmm. it's grown rapidly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, did you say that you went to South Cobb High School? Yes. Uh, uh, how was that when you were going there? You must have graduated about 65 66. or 6. Mm -hmm. Well, it was, um, it was in change. Uh, it was. Had, we had grown rapidly and uh, things had changed, but it was still had a, a rural nature to it somewhat. We still had agriculture mm -hmm. taught in high school. I took mm -hmm. four years of agriculture in mm -hmm. high school. Mm -hmm. My children don't believe that today. <laughs> I was president of the Future Farmers of America, uh -huh. the FFA, uh -huh. and it was still, but we, you know, everybody realized it was changing and changing mm -hmm. rapidly. Agriculture mm -hmm. wasn't, it was about to become a thing. Mm -hmm. um, in South Cobb, my ch I've got to have two children over South Cobb now, mm -hmm. and uh, it's changed to a modern urban school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the things uh, I remember uh, where they teach over there now, they teach French and mm -hmm. Spanish and German. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to take a foreign language when I was in high school, you took Spanish and that was it. Mm -hmm. You were lucky to get there. Yeah. Yeah. How has the Chattahoochee River changed? That wouldn't oh. have been too far away from Mableton. I guess my interest in the Chattahoochee goes back to the the way I can remember it was. Mm -hmm. Chattahoochee was our friend. It was a place where you went to fish, slipped off, uh, you know, and mm -hmm. it was playground. And in the last, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that shocked me when I came back from law school, college and law school was in 72 was the river had gotten so dirty 
mm-hmm. and uh, so polluted. But the river was a place of uh, a place of great friendship. There was a uh, where Six Flags is now, of course, mm-hmm. that was all in cultivation. There was mm-hmm. a big dairy down mm-hmm. west of Six Flags called the Coal Brothers Dairy. We sold milk to them. C-O-L-E? C-O-L-E. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And Sally Cole later was on the school board for years. Mm-hmm. Sally's still alive. But anyway, there were several brothers. I can't, four or five brothers. I remember they called one of them G-Man Cole. He wrote a little mm-hmm. book I read when I was a kid. But mm-hmm. anyway, all that day area down there in Six Flags was in cultivation on the river. Those were all big river bottoms down there. Mm-hmm. And there was there was a German family down there. His name was Johnny Elsner, E L S N E R, and his father was as my daddy called him a full blooded German. He uh-huh. spoke I don't remember him. Daddy told me of him. Uh, said uh-huh. he spoke very broken English. Mm-hmm. And they traded, of course, in the store. And I used to mm-hmm. deliver stuff down there to them. And, uh, it was beautiful. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really was. It's mm-hmm. a sh- there is progress is something to be desired, but there's a price for progress. Mm-hmm. And one of the prices that you pay is that uh, a lot of that uh, error, really slower life and knowing everybody and mm-hmm. pretty country and unpolluted rivers and streams, you lose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you went on to uh, college, uh, did you go to both law school and undergraduate at the University of Georgia? Yeah, I went off. I never applied, I don't think, uh, anywhere else. I didn't know you were supposed to go anywhere else at the University of Georgia. I'd never been to Athens before I went off to school. I, mean, mm-hmm. you know, I lived in Georgia all my life. Uh, my grandfather had gone to one of the old A&M schools, mm-hmm. they called it, up in North Georgia, so he'd never gone off to away to college, mm-hmm. and uh, I was really the first one to go off to college, mm-hmm. and uh, so I went off to the University of Georgia in uh, the fall of 1966. During the summer of '66, before Kennesaw College was started, mm-hmm. I, uh, mm-hmm. the University of Georgia had an extension at mm-hmm. Southern Tech, mm-hmm. and I went mm-hmm. out there and took English and math and beginning subjects yeah. to kind of get a jump on mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. and uh, then I went in the fall to the university. Mm-hmm. Some of the people from that extension uh, yeah. went, came to Kennesaw. Yeah, came part of the faculty. <coughs> um, when you were, um, uh, well let me go back and ask one more question about your high school first. Uh, you were talking about the white flight. Uh, the schools are still segregated in Cobb County when you graduated, aren't are they not? They, they had uh, just uh, started to integrate. Uh, I may have had one year of integration, I don't recall, but it, it was just at that beginning mm-hmm. of that period. Mm-hmm. All right, and so the uh, University of Georgia would have been integrated? But oh, yes, then you got it was. Uh, in fact, it integrated in 61. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, uh, uh, when you went to college, uh, I understand that one of the groups that you got involved in was the Young Republicans. Yes, I was. Uh, our family, uh, you know, the you know, it's uh, the history from up north Georgia. My grandfather was a Republican. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, he was mm-hmm. one of those North Georgia Republicans mm-hmm. that had been there for years and years. And uh, there was no Republican Party in Georgia of any significance. And like I say, uh, you, it was a two-party state, uh, Talmadge's and anti-Talmadge's, mm-hmm. so you always vote in the Democrat primary. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> but uh, we'd always tended to be Republican mm-hmm. um, nationally and other things. So, yes, I was a member of the Young Republicans down there. Something that I am kidded about from time to time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't rec- they said I ho- held some office, uh, or so it's been reported in the real Young Republicans. I don't recall that. I'm not saying I didn't. I'm, it's just been 25 years mm-hmm. ago, and I don't remember everything uh-huh. in great detail yeah. like that. Uh, uh-huh. But anyway, yes, I remember the Young Republicans. Did you support Bo Calloway yes. in '66? Yes, I did. Uh, in fact, that was the first election I voted in mm-hmm. in 1966, and uh, I voted for Bo. And uh, in fact, he came here for a rally, and. Uh, I was on the program. I did the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, and in fact, that year I was either a delegate 
or an alternate delegate to the state Republican convention. Hmm. And in fact, I remember the speaker. The speaker was uh, a little, little known uh, House of Representative member by the name of Gerald Ford. <laughs> How about that? Uh, who later became president of the United sure. States. And, uh, but the convention was in Macon. And those were the days when they were just a handful of Republicans in Cockin, mm -hmm. just a literal handful. Mm -hmm. And then I went off to school, and of course we were in the middle of, well, Vietnam really hadn't started in 66. Mm -hmm. It didn't get started really about 68, 69, got really cranked up. Yeah. And uh, down here, you know. Sure. Uh, it, it, it wasn't an issue at the University of Georgia. It was not an issue at, the, an issue at the University of Georgia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I guess education broadens things, and mm -hmm. uh, and I still have many friends in the Republican Party, and I still have many people. Uh, there's a lot in the Republican Party I like. Mm -hmm. There's a lot I dislike, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there's a lot I like. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came, went on the debate team down there uh -huh. uh, at the university, and I enjoyed that, and it helped. It helped me in speaking skills and research skills. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a young uh, country kid, uh, kind of like mesmerized by the university, you know, mm -hmm. about uh, how big it was. Right, all. right. You say that uh, education broadened, so uh, what uh, caused you to leave the Republican Party? Uh, I guess I became disenchanted with the Republican Party, uh, same way a goodly number of my generation did, and that was Watergate. Mm -hmm. uh, Starting about 71, 70, yeah, 71, 72, I began, because mm -hmm. I was already in law school by that time. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, <clears throat> I was disenchanted. I did not like Richard Nixon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I was disenchanted by, it, uh, by the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. My <clears throat> dean of the law school is named Ralph Beard. It was Ralph Beard. Mm -hmm. He's a good friend of mine now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ralph said, kidding me once, that the reason I changed from Republican to Democrat was that I saw I was going to run for political office, and during the night I had a vision <laughs> about how many Republicans there were and how many Democrats there were. <laughs> Do you think there's any truth to his story? I don't know. I knew Cobb County even back then. Cobb was already beginning with it. Cobb elected a Republican House member in 1964. And uh, I knew the Republican Party in the late, the late 60s and early 70s was going to grow at Cobb. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was, uh, like I said, uh, I, I just feel more at home in the Democratic Party. The, particularly in those years in the Republican Party, this is true even today, the Republican Party seems to be uh, oh, uh, preoccupied with petty political offices like who's going to be chairman of the party rather than really getting elected to the to the mm -hmm. positions in government and mm -hmm. that, that bothers me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much a philosophical difference as a uh, difference in tactics and... and uh, yeah, and remember in the time that I was coming up in the Republican Party, the leaders of the Republican Party were Nelson Rockefeller and Jacob Javits. Mm -hmm. I mean... Pretty uh, liberal. Pretty liberal. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Um, and I, I see that same trend uh, going on in the Republican Party right today. Um, I think that Reagan was an anomaly. Now, I didn't like Reagan. I thought mm -hmm. Reagan was, uh, had, I, I agree with a lot of the precepts, but I mean, this fellow was never in control of this government, <coughs> not informed enough about it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I think Reagan was an anomaly rather than uh, the trend of the Republican Party. And uh, I think that Bush is a good example. Read my lips, no news taxes, and then he proposes mm -hmm. largest tax increase in Georgia and the nation's history. So, what you're saying that they're moving, they're pragmatic. They pragmatic. Move the they move toward the center. So, uh, you know, uh, we are crisis-driven people in this world, in mm -hmm. this nation, mm -hmm. uh, not mm -hmm. in the world. Uh, we mm -hmm. don't react to anything until there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't worry about there being a shortage in gasoline and till we pull up to the Amoco pump and we can't fill up with gasoline. And we'll mm -hmm. not worry about the budget crisis until it's 
Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, too late. Mm -hmm. Did the Vietnam War not have any influence on you? Not much. I, I, of course, you know, I was uh, in ROTC mm -hmm. during Vietnam, and uh, like uh, most of the, uh, you know, Southerners, I mm -hmm. supported the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, and mm -hmm. uh, I was commissioned in the Military Police Corps in mm -hmm. 1971, and uh, was supposed to go two years active duty in 72. In fact, that's where I got the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. I went to the uh, district attorney's office because I thought I was going to work just a short period of time uh -huh. uh, before I went off to the to um, the army. Uh -huh. And instead, Nixon decided to wind the war down. And mm -hmm. when he did, he cut a lot of us who were already ready for active duty down to shorter terms. And I ended up only spending three or four months in active duty. And then they sent me home, put me in a reserve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you graduated from law school in 72 and went straight into the assistant the DA DA's job in mm -hmm. Cobb County? Yes. Uh, would you say a little bit about the experience that you gained during oh, those two years? Oh, it was a great, uh, great time. I, ben Smith was district attorney for mm -hmm. 72 and then Buddy Darden was district attorney in 73. Uh -huh. And uh, I went off to practice law with Ben uh, oh, when he retired until mm -hmm. 75. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, it was a rough and tumble time. So you're saying you worked for uh, Buddy Darden for a while? And for a while. I, I, I worked uh, most of 72 for Ben. And then I went off to the Army in January of 73, mm -hmm. came back in April, worked for Buddy mm -hmm. the rest of that year. Mm -hmm. There was a notorious case in that yes. period that hurt Matthews. Buddy Darden, mm -hmm. uh, the Matthews case. Were you involved yes. in that? Could you say a I was a special that? prosecutor for one, uh, well, for four of the defendants, one of the trials. Uh, Hoyt Powell, Billy Richard Jenkins, uh, George Emmett, mm -hmm. and I've forgotten the other. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised I remember that many. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and uh, I tried four of them, but uh, I came back from the Army and uh, tried four of the cases. And uh, it uh, it hurt, buddy, because the case soured later, mm -hmm. and it happens to any. I mean, it happens to anybody. I was still uh, convinced that uh, we had the right folks the first time, and I am to this day. Mm -hmm. These folks were part of the Dixie Mafia, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was convinced that we had mm -hmm. the right folks. Mm -hmm. The problem was with the woman that was. She the... recanted her testimony. Mm -hmm. And then she later recanted her recant. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it was. Uh, I was convinced that she was telling mm -hmm. the truth. Mm -hmm. And there was enough corroborating evidence uh, about her telling the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, why do you think that it hurt Buddy Darden? Or what well, the case, uh, anytime a case uh, blows up. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of publicity associated mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. Anytime a case blows up, uh, you're, uh, it'll hurt you politically. Mm -hmm. And then in 76, uh, which is when Buddy was defeated. For district attorney? Attorney, yeah. Uh, it's really the first, what I call, hard-hitting negative campaign. Mm -hmm. They put up billboards and signs all over the state, uh, clean up the mess in the DA's office, mm -hmm. I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, Buddy was barely defeated. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just a mm -hmm. few hundred votes. Mm -hmm. Did that issue ever come up in any of your campaigns? It would flare up every once in a while, and uh, my general reply was, uh, let me tell you something, you put me a panel of 12 jurors in there, give me the same witnesses and I'll convict them today. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I believe that to be true. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it never really became an issue in, mm -hmm. in my, any of my races. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, 74 is the year, I believe, in which you were elected to the state senate. Yes. Um, could you talk a little bit about uh, that year and uh, the opponents that you had in 74 and how you, I mean, uh, it's kind of unusual in a way, isn't it, for somebody to run their first race for the state senate? To it was. I, I came back and I was interested in politics and uh, I was looking for something to run for. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was uh, 22 mm -hmm. and uh, 24. And, uh, oh, wait just a minute. 
48 to 58, 68, 26, 26 mm -hmm. I guess it was. You had to be mm -hmm. 25 to run. Mm -hmm. You have to be 25 years old to run for Senate. Anyway, I uh, I came back and uh, I looked at the house races and uh, uh, I thought it would be tough to defeat anybody in the house races. And then Jack Henderson, who was senator, had been senator for about 10 years, mm -hmm. had gotten involved in a nasty zoning case in Cobb County, mm -hmm. in Marietta. And I was encouraged by several neighborhood groups to run. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have any better sense, and I ran. Mm -hmm. And uh, You ran against Jack Henderson? I ran against Jack Henderson. And the, the uh, race went on. It was a hot race. I mean, it was bare knuckles. And uh, three weeks before the election, Jack was killed in an automobile accident. Uh, he, I remember that. Yeah, I mean, it was a tragic thing. Ran uh, into the bridge. The bridge, the old bridge over there on South Carolina. Jack Georgia was Drive. a terrible driver, anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, uh, what happened was they reopened qualifying, and Jack's brother in law, uh, Mike Davis, another fella, and uh, both qualified. Again. Mike Davis is the brother-in-law? No, uh, the brother-in-law's name was Richard Boone, Richard and then uh, another boy in the name of Mike Davis. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyway, I the, we ran the race, and I beat both of them without a runoff. Mm -hmm. I believe I would have beaten Jack. I don't think there was any question that I had Jack to beat. That was a very anti, remember that 74 was the first election after Watergate. Mm -hmm. And there was an extreme anti-incumbents yeah. mm -hmm. swing to it. Mm -hmm. And so then in the general election, I had a Republican nominee by the name of... Uh, in 74, after you won in the uh, primary, who was your Republican opponent? I had a Republican by the name of Jerry North uh -huh. who ran, and I defeated him uh, about 64, if I, the way I recall. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I recall, and Jack Henderson had a lot of baggage that he had to carry with him at that time because it seems like there was a real estate investment down along the coast of yeah, it was. the Sea Islands. Or he, he had gotten a lease from the state of Georgia on Jekyll Island to build a hotel down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I used that, you know, against him. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a tough race. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack and I would have gotten back together after the election if he had lived. Uh, mm -hmm. No matter who had won, um, you know, I talked to him before I ran. I told mm -hmm. him that I just thought I wanted to run, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought I was better qualified. <laughs> and so it's it's not so much an issue oriented race as a question of ethics and. And I, I just wanted to run, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I thought I could get elected, and so mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I've not. I've never been bashful about running. Uh -huh. It's just been proved of recent <laughs> day. <laughs> well, what made you think at age 26 that you were more qualified than a veteran? Well, I thought Jack, um, I'm, and I, I believe this today, even after having served 16 years in the General Assembly, uh, I think that one thing's wrong with uh, Congress, and to, a lar and to a lesser extent wrong with the General Assembly, is we got folks that serve too long. Uh, Mm -hmm. I believe in a turnover, mm -hmm. and I think that uh, I believed in it back then. I'd vote for a limit. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, of course, I won't vote for anything now, but I would have voted for, and I think I did during the General Assembly, vote for a limit on legislative uh, mm -hmm. uh, Where would you put it? Terms. Eight to ten years. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe about eight. Eight years is probably enough. Mm -hmm. So you probably, don't think experience makes that much difference? Let me tell you something. Uh, experience generally means that you get... Uh, worn down by special interest. Mm. It is true that in the early years you have a lot of learning particularly about uh, the different departments and what go, what's a good appropriation and what's not. But mm. if you had staggered provisions so you didn't have a wholesale turnover at any one mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. you could get a, you could overcome that problem. Mm -hmm. What about all the things that um, Joe Mack Wilson and Al Burris were able to deliver because of their seniority. Well, that's true, but if you, the, the point is if everybody were on the same, that's the reason you have to keep on staying. That's the reason I served 16 years. Mm -hmm. You have to uh, build up seniority to help your county. 
And uh, but if everybody were limited to ten years, mm -hmm. eight or ten years, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. It'd probably be a big asset for Cobb County right now. It would. With the lack of seniority. It would. The legislature. Cobb's got the got. The, we have gone from the strongest delegation in the state to the weakest. Uh, we couldn't pass anything uh, that, as a delegation that exists now. And before, there was nothing that we couldn't couldn't achieve if we put our mind to it. I want to get back to that issue in just a second, but I want to stay with 74 for a minute. Okay. Uh, who were some of the other people who came in about the same time you did in 74? Well, Bill Cooper, who's come and gone now, uh, was there. Johnny came in 76. Mm -hmm. Johnny Isaacs. And I met Johnny for the first time in 74. He, Johnny was running for county commissioner. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I met him out on the campaign trail down in Farrell's. I still remember where I met him the mm -hmm. first time. And uh, he and I became friends uh, at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was defeated that year. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he ran in 76 and came uh, then. Um, Let's see. Uh, Carl Harrison came later, and late in like '74, '76. So mm -hmm. it was the beginning of most of the folks that are already gone. I'm kind of the last one to leave of that mm -hmm. crowd. Mm -hmm. What about from around the state? '74 uh, must have been when Zell Miller became. Zell Miller came in, became governor. lieutenant governor. Wayne Gar, uh, no, Wayne didn't come to '80. Uh, Bud Stumball who just ran for. Uh, Lieutenant Governor was defeated, came in that year. Hodge Timmons, uh, Peter Banks, they were, who ran for Congress and was defeated by Newt Gingrich. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, all those folks came in 74. 74 mm -hmm. was a big turnover year in the mm -hmm. General Assembly mm -hmm. because of the Watergate uh, yeah. anti incumbents. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know a lot of the uh, insiders in Cobb County supported uh, George Busby in the yes. governor's race that year. Did you support Busby? Um, I don't even, I don't, do not remember who I voted for in 1974, but I was more concerned about my race than yeah. I was any other. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I was not active in the governor's race that year. Mm -hmm. uh, well, 16 years uh, gives you some perspective on the changes in politics in Cobb County and around the state, and I wonder if we could focus on Cobb. Uh, one of the things that you've mentioned with regard to Johnny Isaacson and some others has been the rise of the Republican Party yes. in Georgia in those years. And, I wonder if you could reflect a little bit on, on why you think the Republicans have grown and what you think the significance is. Oh, the Republicans have grown uh, in Cobb, number one, because we've had a great influx of uh, new people and younger people. And, um, you know, I'm of a generation, my generation was changing, but the generation behind me, my father, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, the, Repub the Republicans were some rich fellow that lived up on a hill that folks talked about. Mm -hmm. The Democrats were the conser a conservative party. And what's happened is, particularly since 72 with George McGovern, the National Democratic Party has uh, shifted left of center, mm -hmm. which is unfortunate. And I don't see any change in that in the near future. Uh, even though they've had calamity after calamity mm -hmm. nationally, and they will finally just have to get so worn out that they have a washout uh, and, mm -hmm. and come back to the middle. But At this point, the interview on October the 5th was interrupted by a telephone call, and Mr. Barnes had some pressing business that had to be conducted that afternoon, and therefore the interview was terminated at that point. However, we rescheduled for Friday, October the 26th, and so the rest of the interview will pick up at that point.